So an interesting title here on screen, Tesla, buy the dips. Now, what if I were to tell you that Tesla is a perma dip? <laughs> I'm not telling you that. I'm just, I just, that was a hypothetical question, by the way. Anyway, do we have a guest in the mainstream finance media who hasn't got the message that the current narrative is Tesla should be booted from the Magnificent Seven and Elon bad? Let's find out. Let's talk first about what's happening now with Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, already a billionaire, I don't even know how many times over at this point. Is this just another distraction with OpenAI and this lawsuit? I think it is, Dom, and I think the market will quickly turn to other issues. I mean, I thought the more important news was the um, announcement that they are reducing or adding incentives in China uh, and to lower prices and in increased demand. But, you know, his distractions uh, would probably put most of us uh, you know, under under the table, but he just moves on. And I was at the Mega Factory, um, thanks to the folks at RBC uh, this week, and there is a lot of promising stuff going on at that company. What exactly is the promising stuff? And we already know that you're bullish and we know that you're long the stock and you have a vested interest in this stock going higher. But what makes you that much more bullish? What did you see that made you feel like this is something that you want to keep on accumulating? Well, so the mega factory makes um, battery storage, basically utility grade battery storage. So that these. Hey, but 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 I thought Tesla was just a car company. Oh, and their margins were collapsing. Why would she be claiming that Tesla has a factory producing grid scale battery storage products with, by the way, massive margins? Unless it's true. Trolling aside, I do once again want to emphasize, don't sleep on Tesla Energy. This is a massive growth business and, importantly, a high profit margin business. Unlike the purchase of a vehicle, which many consumers, most consumers, don't purchase rationally, despite the fact that many would like to claim and think they do, most purchase emotionally, partially due to brainwashing from advertising, and partially due to how they believe people will perceive them if they're driving a certain vehicle. What it says about them, truth be told, no one gives a fuck about you. They're probably not thinking about you. Sorry, not sorry. So a typical consumer isn't going to do the math and look at the total lifetime cost of ownership and think, oh, geez, you know, I could buy this Tesla, even though it's a little bit more than I was planning on paying. It's actually going to ultimately cost me a lot less over five, seven plus years of ownership. Huh. Oh, it's the safest vehicle in the world as well. Huh. Instead, consumers who I generally believe skew to one end of the bell curve see enough advertising from a company claiming they have the best vehicle or make the safest vehicle or the coolest this or some other bullshit or just feature a bunch of celebrities in advertising and suddenly buy the vehicle whereas when it comes to grid scale energy solutions batteries do you think the person looking at the finances making purchasing decisions at a huge corporation gives a fuck what the potential battery they're looking at buying says about them of course not they don't care if it's going to add three or four inches to their micro dong or not. They don't care. They just care about the numbers. And the numbers are insane. These things are the no-brainer of no-brainers. And it's important to understand this. Just imagine that you, instead of watching some guy on the internet talk about Tesla 24-7, you work. You work in a company at a relatively large scale. And you are responsible. One of your key responsibilities is to save and or make money. You are responsible for some key purchasing decisions. And you... Discover that you can be responsible for a decision that literally saves and or makes your company millions of dollars a year, tens of millions of dollars a year, hundreds of millions of dollars over the next decade or so. Just imagine hypothetically you could do that and you talk to your boss or manager. I don't even know how this corporate world works anymore. It's been a long time since I've been someone else's bitch and go, hey, boss or manager or whoever the fuck. I just figured out how to make us a fuck ton of money or save us a fuck ton of money. What do you think about this? You get a nice pat on the head and well, good, good job, boy. You might get a, a nice beach towel as a Christmas bonus this year. <laughs> good job. You're saving us millions of dollars. Thank you. So the point I get at here, these products are the biggest no-brainer of all time for certain businesses, companies. And it's not just utilities, energy providers. No, 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 no. There are businesses themselves that have a large enough operation in which these assets can make financial sense to literally have on site for their own energy needs. Yet, because these are not consumer-facing products, most retail investors, most of the general public, completely ignore these gigantic money printers with near infinite demand. And they fail to understand that they really are absolute no-brainers. So again, don't sleep on Tesla Energy big walls of batteries that will really change the way that uh, electric utilities operate and should reduce outages, 
as well as all the forest fires that we've been uh, seeing over the years. In the Master Plan 3 presentation that Tesla made a year ago, they estimated that battery storage could account for 35% of total fossil fuel reduction. That's versus 21% for the car. Add to that, they only have a 15% market share, but they have a cost advantage of about 30% due to their vertical integration efforts and cost reductions, obviously. And so this is now the fastest growing, most profitable business at, at Tesla, and some estimate will be worth one and a half times the car business in the not too distant future. So one, it's great to see a guest on CNBS talking about Tesla who actually knows what the fuck she's talking about. And Per the estimate there, I believe this is via RBC Capital, who recently put out a new note on Tesla's energy business. Imagine a situation in which Tesla's energy business did outgrow the value of its automotive business. That same automotive business, by the way, that Tesla themselves have told the public is likely to be selling 20 million vehicles per year in the future. This, by the way, would be in line with some of Musk's prior comments, who himself has said that Tesla's energy business could grow to be the same size, if not larger than Tesla's automotive business over the long term. So one more time, what was I saying? Oh, that's right. Don't sleep on Tesla energy. What exactly? Oh, oh, that's a huge thesis for the bull side of things. One of the reasons for the downside as of late over the shorter to medium term for Tesla has been the concerns about China. Hyper competitive mm-hmm. market out there right now. We have a lot of maybe even. Oh, yes, China. China. Can someone remind me what was the best-selling vehicle in China? Pick pick your time frame in the last twelve months, the entire year, or any of the individual months in that year. Does anyone know what was the best-selling vehicle in China? Anyone? Any guesses? It definitely wasn't Tesla's Model Y. That's why I'm asking. Because um, yeah, I just I'd really like to know. Because yeah, China, Tesla. Uh oh price wars, you want to call them, going on over there right now, and a slowing EV demand picture here in America. How does all that counter out? And maybe the price does reflect why those issues have become more front and center. Yeah, no, it's a real concern. I mean, we initiated our position during the last distraction, which was the X acquisition. Uh, we we bought it last January at about 100 and 105 bucks a share. And, and that was a, a short-lived distraction. And so I think what you have to pay attention to with this company is where is the technology going and where are they going to see the growth? And if they can grow this business half as fast as they think they can, it, it will solve so many problems with renewables uh, and the usage of renewables at you know on a 24 hour uh, per day schedule and so i and they are already monetizing it to a just wanted to note disclosures here the guest actually amazingly owns tesla stock personally so too her firm clearly putting her money where her mouth is and i like to see this of course i'm not surprised she previously mentioned things about tesla that gave me the impression she actually knows what the fuck she's talking about and understands the company so obviously why wouldn't you own it you know This is pretty rare, though. A lot of these supposed experts, you see these disclosures, it's no, 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 no. No skin in the game, but here's my uninformed opinion on a stock that I don't own, either because I can't or I don't see the opportunity there. Or uh, per day schedule. And so I, and they are already monetizing it to a great degree. It's a nascent industry. So I really think that's where investors are missing uh, some of the focus. And what the head, they're reacting to the headlines on the slowing EV demand uh, around the globe. And I get it. I mean, I just leased a, a car in the UK and it was a nightmare trying to find the, the charging station, station sorry, um, or, you know, not being familiar with the territory. So sure. they're not for everyone. But I think we learned people want to buy Teslas more than they want to buy EVs. Damn, dude. She just spat some serious facts to wrap that segment up. It's true that people want to buy Teslas more than they want to buy EVs. Now, it's nothing against electric vehicles. It's just the currently available options outside of China that aren't a Tesla suck harder than a vacuum. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with sucking hard in certain contexts, but in the context of a vehicle for consumers to purchase worth tens of thousands of dollars, that's not one of the domains in which you do want something that sucks that hard. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. 
I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus, ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the fuck, really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, snake oil salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1.